Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Small Engines Q&A number 98 for Friday, April 27th, 2012. Welcome back. And I also want to welcome all my new subscribers. I got a lot since Eric the Car Guy mentioned me in one of his videos last week. So what I'm going to do today is mention him. If you have car questions or if you're wondering about something that is auto related, go to his channel, Eric the Car Guy. He's really articulate, he explains things really good, and his videos are of good quality. So go check him out, I'll put the link to his channel underneath this video. And also regarding my Q&A's, I said I was taking a break after my 100th video. So I have today's video, then 99 and 100, then I'm going to take a month off and then come back. So they're not going to be done, I'm just taking a little break. And I also want to thank all you guys for saying that I deserve that break. I really appreciate that. And a little note on the weather side today, we've had some nasty weather lately. I know we had some really nice weather at the start of April, but now it's turned nasty again. It's hailing, it's snowing, and raining, and it's cold. So hopefully, I hope soon that the weather will improve. Just makes it a lot easier to make repair videos for lawn equipment when the weather's nice. And it's so cold, I've even got the fire going on today. In my first question today, YouTuber asked me, how do I know if the carburetor in my power equipment is a Walbro or a Zama? Well, the way you would know is by looking on the carburetor. It's going to say what it is. This one's a Walbro. If I grab another carburetor here, you can see it says Zama on it. It says it on both sides for the Zama carburetor. Now, the Zama carbs are made in China. The Walbro carburetors are usually made in the USA. I believe some are probably made in China now. I'm not sure. And in the odd case, you will still have an older Tillotson carburetor on some equipment. Usually you would find the Tillotson carburetors on some older chainsaws. These are really good carburetors, by the way. So it's really important that you know what your carburetor is before you ask a small engine shop for a carburetor kit. Because what happens sometimes is the same power equipment may have either a Zama or a Walbro carburetor. So sometimes just asking for a carburetor kit for your power equipment may not be enough information. And if you want to get even more specific about your carburetor, you can look over here, and on this Walbro carburetor, it says WA149A. That's the model number of your carburetor. If you bring this number with you, or the whole carburetor, when you get a kit, that's even better. And with the Zama carburetors, if you look on this side here, you can see it says C1Q. And sometimes, if you look over here, you're going to see some numbers as well. I don't see any on this carburetor. I'm just going to grab another carb to show you. And here's another carb I just found. And you can see these numbers here that are stamped or marked. If you bring these numbers as well, then you have even better chance of getting the proper kit for your carburetor. So that's how you know what kind of carburetor you have in your power equipment. In my next question, sometimes people ask me, can I use carburetor cleaner to clean the diaphragms in my carburetor? Well, the answer to that is no, you should not do that because it's pretty harsh stuff. It can actually ruin your diaphragms, especially if the carb cleaner sits on them too long. If you accidentally spray them and wipe it off right away, you're okay. But to say you're going to clean diaphragms with carb cleaner is a big no-no. What can happen is you can damage the little tabs here on the diaphragms. It can make them shrivel and shrink, and then they don't work as good as they should. And you may also shorten the life of your diaphragms. And another area I don't use carburetor cleaner is on the needle valves. They have a little nitrile tip here, I believe is what it's made of. And you can damage that as well. I also do not spray carb cleaner on the seat of the needle valve as well for fear of damaging it as well. Now my next question today, people are asking me, what kind of oil should I use in my generator? Well, if you live in a hot climate, you can use this oil. It's HD30, it's an SE30 oil, it's nice and thick. It's good for summer conditions. I wouldn't use it in the winter time though. Now, if you live in a colder climate like I do and the weather changes a lot from hot to cold, then I would recommend 5W30. That's what I use because it's good for the summer as well. It's not as thick. And if it's the middle of the winter time, I don't have to worry about having summer oil left in it from the summer. Now you can use synthetic or regular conventional oil, but what I recommend is to always refer to the manual of your generator. Or another good thing to do would be to call the manufacturer of your generator and ask them what they recommend. 
In my next question, a YouTuber saw the ball hitch that I have at the back of this tractor here in a previous video, and he was wondering, did I have to drill out the hole bigger to put the ball on? Well, the answer to that is yes, the hole had to be drilled a little bit bigger for the ball to fit through. Now, if you're worried that this is not strong enough for a ball hitch, you can always cut a metal plate to fit exactly on top of this one and weld it on just to reinforce it. So unless you can find one that's small enough to fit through the hole, you're going to have to make the hole bigger. And another quick question that I got last week is, do you get a lot of problems with hydrostatic transmissions for tractors? Well, the answer to that is no. I rarely have to work on them. The only thing that I have to do to them most of the time is replace the oil or change a seal or something like that. That's about it. I rarely get problems with them. But if you do get problems, it can be a little bit more costly than the regular transmission that is not hydrostatic. And actually, I prefer hydrostatic transmissions on lawn tractors. Now, my last tip today is regarding a question that I get sometimes from people. This engine that you see here is a Briggs and Stratton engine. The recoil's off, that's why you don't see the Briggs logo. Now, the question I get in regards to these engines often is if they have a fuel pump. And the answer to that is yes, the fuel pump is right here. The carburetor is off of this engine and usually there's a cover over here which hides the carburetor and sometimes hides the fuel pump. So it might be hard to see if you have a fuel pump on your engine. So I'm just letting you know that this is where it is. It's made of plastic. There's two bolts holding it and that's how you know. The reason why I'm showing you that fuel pump is because sometimes people email me with problems they're having and they don't realize that they have a fuel pump on their engine and that sometimes that could be causing them a problem especially if there's a fuel leak. What often happens with these fuel pumps is because they're made of plastic is that sometimes the plastic warps and you get a fuel leak in between the seam over here. Your engine may still run, it may not run properly though and you will have a fuel leak all the time coming down from your engine and it's because the plastic warps. So what I recommend when that happens is just get a brand new fuel pump, slap it on, and usually that will cure your problem. So guys, thanks for watching. I have a lot of work to do, so this will wrap it up. Maybe I've got to get some firewood, hopefully not. And I'm just hoping that the weather gets warmer soon. It looks like at the beginning of May here in Ontario, Canada, it's going to start warming up. And it's going to be a lot easier to make videos. So thanks for watching, and come back next Friday for episode number 99. Have a great weekend.